Somebody asked me after, who was that that came up to me? I think it was uh, Sister Kiana at the uh, praise and worship they asked me if I was hot or if I was sweating. I was like, nah, y'all are doing the thing. But how many of y'all know that last song, Like No Other, got me going? Okay? It just shifted something in my temperature. But to God be the glory. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, again, also, when you, if you get an opportunity, uh, uh, reshare the video or share it once we get started. Because remember, we are now broadcasting live from the church's page. Uh, that way, uh, people can uh, start coming through that page instead of my personal page. And so, uh, just FYI. Amen. Lift your Bibles in the air and let us declare. This is my Bible. This is my sword. My instructions for life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I shall hear it, receive it, apply it, and obey. Share it with others who don't know the way. My heart is open, so have your way. Speak to me, Lord. Speak today. In Jesus' name, I'll never be the same. Speak to me, Lord. Speak today. Father, we just ask that you be with us as we get into the word of God on today. Let it be a wonderful teaching, uh, just a fun teaching, Lord God, but a necessary teaching. Father, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You all may be seated. Uh, we may need to have, I'll just, I'll just pass this uh, to uh, Deacon Martin, in case in the midst of this teaching, there is some interaction. I'm not going to make it one of those typical uh, Sunday morning messages where you can't interact. You can ask questions, make statements. This is just part one of what I'm getting ready to teach. Uh, I was excited about this teaching. You all know that this is our Millennials Living for Christ service. Uh, I had our millennial to take a break because remember I said there are times when I like to pour into the millennials. Amen. Uh, but this is not a message just for millennials, amen. This is a message for singles. How many of y'all single? Raise your hand. Raise them high. <laughs> all right, all right. You, 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 you single? You single? I ain't see your hand. Because if you ain't married, you single. You can even have a boo, but you're still single. All right, and so this is a message that will uh, be for the singles. A lot of times I do talk about stuff that pertains to marriage, you know, but I don't want to leave my singles out. Amen. Let us turn our Bibles, first of all, to Proverbs uh, chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, I will be reading this from the New King James Version of the Bible. Uh, as you all are turning, I just want to take an opportunity to greet those that are tuning in via technology uh, if this is your first time tuning in, I'm Apostle Tanya Mitchell, uh, the founding pastor of Nothing But The Truth Ministries located here in Clinton, Maryland. Uh, we love for uh, you to be able to tune in from the uh, comfort of your own home. You may not even be in this area. You may be located in another state, but technology allows you to be able to receive this word that is going forward on today. So I pray that you are blessed. Amen. And so we're looking at Proverbs chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 1 through 9. Amen? And the word of the Lord, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Even in my Bible, uh, because again, this is millennials living for Christ, but uh, in my Bible, at the top of my Bible, it says wisdom for young people. Uh, when you think about uh, Proverbs chapter 1, verses uh, uh, from Proverbs chapter 1 through chapter 9 is wisdom for young people. Oftentimes when you look at the Psalms and you look at the Proverbs, they're broken up into different chapters, amen, uh, different subject matters. And so this particular beginning says wisdom for young people. All right. Uh, the Proverb of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, Amen. 
And a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. To understand a proverb and an, and an enigma, the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. I need to read that for you in another translation in case that sounded a little too deep for you. Amen. I want to read it to you in the Living Bible translation. You don't have to turn there. Uh, not the New Living Translation, but the Living Bible. And it says, these are the Proverbs of King Solomon of Israel, David's son. He wrote them to teach his people how to live, how to act in every circumstance. For he wanted them to be understanding, just, and fair in everything they did. I want to make the simple-minded wise, he said. I want to warn young men about some problems they will face. Because if you live on the earth long enough, you will come into contact with some problems and some challenges. Amen. And so he wanted to warn them about some things that they will encounter in life. Amen. It says, I want those already wise to become wiser. So don't think just because you're wise that you can't receive anything. His thing is, yes, you may be wise already, but I want you to even become wiser and to become leaders by exploring the depths of meaning in these nuggets of truth because Proverbs is filled with some awesome nuggets of truth. How does a man become wiser? The first step is to trust and reverence the Lord. That is the first and the most important way. And then it says, only fools refuse to be taught. Listen to your father and mother. What you learn from them will stand you in good stead. It will gain you many honors. Again, when you think about a father and a mother, it represents a person of authority. Amen? So whether it's your natural mother or father, your spiritual mother or father, your ministry kingdom leader, the reality is it is so key to listen to those that are in authority that are trying to help you to not be simple-minded, amen, but want you to be wise. And so I want you to change your thinking to a degree because sometimes the hardest thing to do is minister to grown folks. It's hard to minister to grown folks. So I'm saying to you today, don't allow the I'm grown factor to keep you from listening and learning. You can be 20, 15, 60, or 70 something. The bottom line is you are not too old to learn. You are not too old to listen. Amen? So don't allow that to hinder you. Proverbs is a book that is full of wisdom. It is full of advice about many different matters. Right. When you think about wisdom, wisdom is the ability to judge correctly. Amen? Sometimes we don't know how to judge correctly, but we need to be able to go into the Word of God because it will give us guidance as to how to judge correctly between different situations. So wisdom is the ability to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action based on knowledge and understanding. People will come into your life and they will give you wisdom so that you are able to judge correctly and to follow the best course of action. And a lot of times people will give you advice. Amen. And so Proverbs, again, is a book that is full of wisdom and advice. What is advice? I'm so glad you asked today. Advice is a recommendation regarding a decision or course of conduct or counsel. Sometimes we don't necessarily get the advice or the counsel that we need because we think we know everything and we don't talk to anybody. And we just do what we want to do. But young people, millennials living for Christ, I'm here to tell you that even though you're grown, you may be 30, you may be 33, you may be 29, whatever the case may be, you may be 60 up in this camp and thank you a millennial, amen. Uh, there she is over there, y'all see it. See, she know who she is in the house of the Lord. <laughs> but the, at the end of the day, you know, advice and wisdom is very key. I think about it. Again, advice is a recommendation regarding a decision or course of conduct. It is counsel. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. 
See, I'm just coming from the Bible. The Bible says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, according to you, according to your own understanding. It says, but he who heeds counsel is wise. But again, when we get grown, we think we don't need counsel. But the Bible tells us to seek wise counsel, not just counsel from any old body, but you need to seek wise counsel because there are some individuals in your life that can help you to make some right decisions. But again, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Heeding to wisdom and advice can keep one from a lot of unnecessary mess and drama. How many of y'all know, for real, now that, look, when you look back over your life, there's some things that you wish you would have listened to. Yeah. That your mama might have told you, or your daddy may have told you, or your auntie may have told you, or even your pastor. There's some things you wish that you really would have listened to. But because you thought you knew everything, uh -huh. you ain't want to listen to them. Right. A lot of times you feel like they don't understand you know, a lot of times we feel like that people don't understand that they ain't been through nothing. No, no. Uh, a lot of times people can give you some good advice and counsel based on things that they have experienced in life to keep you from experiencing some things. Amen? And so if we heed to wisdom and advice, it can keep us from unnecessary mess and drama. But a lot of people, unfortunately, learn the hard way. Amen? And so today, I simply want to share some wisdom and advice about a subject that the Bible does not say a lot about. There are some topics that you just will not be able to find a lot of information on in the Bible. And one of those topics that we're going to discuss today is dating. We're talking about dating one-on-one. -on -one. Amen? I, I think about all that we talked about for the last two weeks as far as the family structure we talked about how uh, uh, things were actually done in biblical times and how you had to actually study history to find out certain things. But I'm going to tell you, you can go through the pages of the Bible and you're not going to find a lot about dating. It's just as simple as that. And so we're going to talk about dating. The Bible says in Proverbs 18:22, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. I'm going to say that one more time. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Are there any men in the house that have favor from the Lord? Amen. I know that's right. Look, if ain't nobody else proud about their wife, my baby proud about his wife that he found. Amen? Okay, I see another hand. I see another hand in the house. Hallelujah. Uh, but the reality of it is because guess what? Sometimes you got to know that, hey, I am a good thing. Hello? <laughs> okay. I'm a good thing. But anyway, last week we saw in the Bible that women who were made wives didn't have much say about the matter. It was just simply a man saw him, wanted her, and she was, he asked for her to be his wife. She ain't had no choice. The father accepted the dowry. Hey, this is your husband. Make it work. Which is not a good thing. Amen. How many of y'all happy that times have changed? Amen. Let's just say, not only have times changed, again, we looked at the fact that a lot of stuff that was done was based on a particular region. Because even in some areas, they still believe in that uh, 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 choosing your spouse for you. But I'm going to tell you. Say that again, uh, Kian? Arranged marriage. Arranged marriage. That's the right terminology for it. Right. And so thank God times have changed. And so the Bible does, didn't say a lot about it. But the key is times may have changed, but God's desire for order and family has not changed. He created man. Gave man a woman, because after he created the woman, he gave the woman to the man. They were husband and wife. Then they had children. So the family unit does not change. The order of God does not change just because times have changed. Amen? And again, yes, we've done a lot of things out of order, but it should be a man and a woman meet each other. Eventually, they join together in marriage, then eventually move on to start reproducing. Amen? But before a marriage takes place, how many of y'all know a man and a woman have to meet first? They have to meet first before they can just actually get married. Amen? I'm excited because tomorrow is Memorial Day, and that marks the shape up that changed my life forever. Amen? It was the day that my husband came into the barber shop or the salon that I was working in requesting a, a, a shape up, and we've been together ever since then for 19 years. Amen. And can I tell you, 
for 19 years in a marriage. Has anybody else in here been in a relationship for 19 years? Anybody? We have we have two. We only had two. You've been in one for 19 years? 14. 19? Yes, in the past. Okay. In, in the 16? Okay, so we how much? 14. All right. So, you know, we got some individuals that, you know, have, have, have put in some work. Now, can I ask another question? For those of you all that raised your hand, are you still with those people? No. Nope. Only two of us are. Thank you, Jesus. Me and Janelle. And so guess what? Maybe the other ones are not the way they need to be because maybe they, maybe some counseling was avoided, some advice may not have been taken, you know, you did what was right in your own eyes without considering anybody because you was grown. But even when I think about me and my husband and our 19 years of history, we received much counsel. We received much advice. And a lot of it we may not have necessarily agreed with because we was ready to do what we wanted to do. But how many of y'all know we heeded to the wisdom and the advice because we submitted ourselves to the one who we entrusted to guide us on the path that we have never been on before. And so even if you've been on the path before, that don't mean you did it right. Sometimes you got to get to a place to say, how do I do this thing right? So can I tell you, being with one person for 19 years, that's some stuff that I can teach you. I didn't always do things right the majority of the time in the early part of the relationship, and you all know that story, but guess what? That was short-lived. There's some things that I can teach you, some advice that I can give you about dating. How many of y'all know? I haven't been married all my life. I've dated. And how many of y'all know I've dated wrong too? So there are some things that I can help to give you some guidance about. And so before a marriage can take place, a man and woman must meet and then date before getting married. And let me tell you this. In this particular teacher, I'm not getting caught up in tomato, tomato. Because, you know, when you think about the term tomato, tomato, you know, people want to get caught up on terminology. I need you to understand what I'm talking about when I say dating. Amen? I'm not talking about the fact that when you just go out on one date that you're dating that person. No, that's a date. You went out. But I'm talking about when you actually start dating a person, trying to get to know them, spending time communicating in that process. Because before you say I do, you have to take time to get to know a person before you make a major commitment. And so, a uh, commitment. So, sometimes you have people that want to say, well, you know, we don't date. It's about courtship and all that. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't want to hear all that. Just simply understand what I'm talking about. I believe, this is me, as the body of Christ, believers, I believe that if you are single, that you date with a purpose. You don't date because you're bored. You don't date just because somebody willing to spend some money on you and you ain't really feeling them. That's not right. My thing is, you know, when you realize that somebody, if you know, first of all, let me just say this. I believe you date with a purpose. And as a believer, what, do, what is the purpose? To, to get, eventually get married. Right. That is the purpose of us dating, to eventually get married. Because we should want to fall into the line of the order of God. Man, woman, come together, marry, have a family. I don't believe you just date just to be dating. Because what happens is if you have absolutely no intention on getting married, and you know that without a shadow of a doubt, don't play with people's feelings. Right. Don't play with people's feelings. Because you in it with one mindset, and you're spending time with this person, communicating with this person, but yet you are not looking for anything out of the relationship. But during this process of you all dating, talking, spending time, they are gaining feelings for you. And now you just want to be like, I told you I wasn't trying to be in a relationship. I don't want to be bothered the whole night. Now you done mess with somebody's feelings. Don't y'all realize people crazy today? Haven't y'all seen Snapped? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't y'all seen all these crazy shows that they have out here where people's feelings get played with and their emotions get torn and people will take you up out of here. They will come up with some ways to end your life. 
And when you understand that that's the world that we live in today because it hasn't always been like that. But you got to be careful nowadays because everybody can't handle you cutting them off. And so when you know early on in the situation that this ain't for you, don't continue in it. But I do believe that before you find the one that you're going to marry, you may date a few people. Because usually it's not the first person that come along that that's the one that you're going to be with. Amen? And so dating, when you think about it, it has a purpose. Dating is a time of discovery. It is a time of learning and finding out information about each other. However, before you can even date, you have to first meet somebody. You have to first meet somebody. Amen? So let's talk about a couple of ways to actually meet people. Somebody tell me uh, 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 the old-fashioned way of meeting people. Introduction. Introduction, amen. That's one of the ways, amen. Introduction. And when you think about introduction, that is through the hookup, amen, or the matchmaking process. You know, somebody may know somebody's a, a single individual. They may think that you're a nice person. So their thing is, I want to introduce you to sister so-and-so. I want to in introduce you to brother so-and-so. And so that's the way that people actually come together and mate. I mean, meet. <laughs> they eventually may mate. <laughs> but I'm talking about a mate in marriage, amen? Okay, I, I'm, I'm about order. But uh, that's a way. How many of y'all know the old-fashioned way, face-to-face? -face? You could just simply be walking down the street. You could be sitting at the bus stop. You could be on your job. You could be in the grocery store. These are ways. You could be in church. Most women be like, whatever. Yeah. You know, there ain't no men in the church, and the ones that's already in the church, they already married or they gay. <laughs> so the bottom line is, but, you know, you got some people that do meet in church. But the reality is you can actually meet somebody, singles. You can actually meet somebody the way we used to do it a long time ago. But we know times have changed. They don't do it like that no more. Because guess what? Technology has changed everything. Yes. People today meet through their phone, through their tablet, or through their computer. That is the most popular way today. Amen? You got individuals that, de that, that meet through DMs or, or Messenger or the Gram or on Facebook. Amen? These are ways that people introduce themselves. They may start off with a simple, hey to see if you're going to respond. Hi, beautiful, hello, handsome, whatever the case may be. Nowadays, you got to be real careful about the DMs, too, and the messengers, because, you know, these families like to send pictures nowadays. Can I keep it for real? Mm -hmm. See, because out here in the world today, they don't have any class. And a lot of times, if they sending you pictures up front, and I'm talking about, y'all know, I ain't got to say what kind of pictures. The bottom line is, they testing you to see where you at. They testing your spirit, and if you got a foul spirit, you gonna fall for it. You gonna send some pictures back. That's why. Let me tell you something. If you deal with a lust spirit, you need to get delivered from your lust spirit before you get into any relationship. Marriage don't change your lust spirit. If you are dealing with a lust spirit and you get married, you will cheat on your spouse. You will step out and do things that are inappropriate in your relationship when you deal with a lust spirit, because a marriage does not deliver you. Just like if you're a person that's overtaken with loneliness, guess what? Marriage won't cure your loneliness. Because you can be a person that suffers with loneliness and be in a room full of people all the time. Being around people don't change that. There's something going on inside of you that you have to deal with. And so, people meet through technology. Uh, uh, they meet on Facebook, the social media sites. How many of y'all know they meet on dating websites? Dating websites are very, very popular. I can tell you, back in the day, I tried getting on a dating website. Me and my mother, through one of her friends, you know, she wanted to, she was into the dating on the websites, and you, you, you know, she hooked us up, and so now we looking through all kind of profiles and reading all type of stuff, and you know, I uh, uh, just that was what, you know, we thought it was crazy then. We tried it, but how many of y'all know that's normal now? For your old heads, you may be saying, nah, I don't, I don't believe in that online dating and all that type of stuff. Let me tell you something. You don't have to believe in it, but that's what's happening. That's what's happening. 
You may not believe in uh, 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 the things that we do a lot today because let's think about it. Technology has changed everything. At one point in time, to get a job, you got up in the morning. You got dressed. You went to a place of employment looking for a job. You ain't even got to leave your house today to find work. All you have, you can, you can be in your pajamas looking for a job because you won't do it on the computer. You don't have an opportunity to meet the people face to face until after they connect with you through technology. So you may not agree with that, but go walk into a job facility trying to apply for the job. Guess what they will tell you to do? Have you submitted your uh, application online? See, you could be stuck in your own way and say, no, no, I'm not going to do that. That's not the way we find a job where you will be jobless. Because you will get dressed. They're not going to have a conversation with you. You can't sell yourself no more. So it's all about what you look like on paper. And how many of y'all know on these profiles, some people look real good on these profiles. Then you meet them in person and they got their senior, they got their picture when they graduated from high school up there. And you meet them and you say, I know this ain't the person that, that I've been talking to. And, you know, in the picture you had here, but today you ain't got none. In the picture you weighed 150, but you, you weighed 300 pounds in person. Because guess what? Just like you fix up your resumes, people fix up their profiles. It's the truth. And so, the bottom line is we have to deal with the fact that things have actually changed as far as how we do it. Now, can I tell you, this is my stance on it. I don't care whether you meet a person face to face. I don't care if somebody introduces you to somebody that they think may be a good fit for you. And I don't care if you meet somebody online. Guess what? No matter how you meet them, you still got to get to know them. Because yeah. even the one that introduces you, they don't know how that person is in a relationship. They may just work with them and see that they're a nice person. Oh, I think this one may be a nice fit. He saves or she saves, and that's all they know. They go to church and, you know, seem like they're nice because they're nice in the office, but you don't know them. Just like everybody in here seems nice right now, but we don't know you outside of the four walls sometimes. You're a different person. And so you have to get to know them. Whether you meet them online, whether you meet them face to face, or whether somebody introduces you. Because online dating is the most popular form of meeting today. I am going to do an entire teaching next week on that. I will continue my teaching on dealing with the whole online dating concept, some of the myths that's surrounding it, some of the pros and the cons, amen? And so when it comes down to it, I'm a person, I'm all for people dating, and I, I'm all for people finding love. You know, I, I, it, it is absolutely nothing wrong with that. You know, I've heard some people say in this church that have dealt with me for years, you know, when we meet somebody, we, we, don't want, we don't want you to know. We don't want you to know when we meet somebody. And I'm like, why not? You know, and the reason is a lot of time because of the wisdom and advice that may go forward. Can I tell you this? When you're single, when you're single and you're trying to be accountable, when you meet somebody, you need to let whoever you're accountable know that you have met somebody. It's not that they need to meet them face to face immediately. It's a point of accountability because guess what? If we see you slipping, we got a reason to, we know why you're slipping. But if you all dating on the day, I know I've been in churches for a long time and you'd be surprised you discovered somebody that had a man for 20 years and you ain't never even met them. <laughs> but, but, but when you think about it, no accountability, but when there's true accountability, you know, you will let people that you're accountable know that, yes, I am in the dating process, you know, and I just want you to know I may have met this person, you know, we just exchange numbers, we try to get to know each other, but it's nothing really, I can't say where it's going, but I just want you to know. Or you had a person on the, uh, I know one young lady when she first came here, she said, right now at this particular time, I'm not dating because I know I'm not ready. She said, I know I got some things that I'm dealing with. And I know I'm not ready. Based on her level of accountability, even when individuals, she would meet individuals, she would have a conversation with me about them just to really pull herself back in. Because I would just talk to her and say, okay, are you ready now? Because I never told her that she wasn't ready. This is something that the Lord told her. And so we would have conversations. And, you know, when somebody would come on to her and, you know, she was, you know, having that moment of wanting to be with somebody, we would talk about it. Then she'd be like, you know what, I ain't even going there because for real, I still ain't there. You know, now she realizes that she's in a different place where it may be something that she's willing to adventure out into now because she dealt with some things in her own life. 
And so I'm all for people dating to find love. But how many of y'all know I'm not down with desperation dating? I'm not down with desperation dating in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Amen? When you think about the word desperation, desperation is defined as a loss of hope or a great need that can make you act irrationally. Desperate, when you think about desperation, that's when you're at a place where you have a loss of hope. Okay? You, you, you really don't think it's going to happen. You have a loss of hope or a great need that can make you act irrationally. And so, when you are an individual that is into desperation dating, it will cause you to make foolish decisions and to compromise your standards, if you have some. Hello, because the key word is if you have some. If you are flowing in desperation dating, it will cause you to compromise your standards, if you have some. Unfortunately, too many females have a tendency to get caught up in desperation dating. Not men, because it takes a whole lot for a man to commit to a relationship. He ain't going to just, he, men are not like us. They're not like us. If you look in the Bible, most of them were driven by one thing, what they saw. <laughs> it looked good to them and they wanted it. The reality, when they realize that there is more to a woman than that, you know, they, 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 when it comes down to making a commitment, it has to be more than just that. Because how many of y'all know that get old? But again, men are not like women when it comes down to dating. And many of them don't necessarily get caught up into desperation dating. One of the reasons that females have a tendency to get caught up in this is based on the fact that I've shared this before, that there is really a lack of men. There's not enough men to go around to all the women in the world. Every woman that wants to get married, unfortunately, won't get married. And so the lack of men causes women to become desperate. They don't mind sharing a man. Oh, the Bible says in Isaiah 4, chapter 1, New Living Translation, it says, in that day so few men will be left that seven women will fight for each man, saying, let us all marry you. We will provide for our own food and clothing. Only let us take your name so we won't be mocked as old maids. That's the Bible. That's the Bible. Because we press, guess what? You ain't got to have a job. You ain't got to be doing nothing with your life. I will take care of myself. Just be my man. That's the Bible. And how many of y'all know that is reality? Don't act like it ain't reality. Yes, it is. Desperation dating. I'll never forget one young lady told me. She said, well, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's better to have a piece of a man than to have no man at all. We got a, a, a comment, question. And, and, and she was serious. She said, it's better. Because she knew the dude that she was involved with wasn't no good. She shouldn't have been dealing with a man some. And her thing is, well, I'm going to tell you straight. It's better to have a piece of a man than no man. Come on, sir. This question has been burning me for years. Uh huh. And the question is, how is it that a woman will know a man has seven kids, still get involved with this person with a track record of having seven kids, not with the with the children's like mother or being responsible? What 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 is it about this person that that makes you want to that you see it's not good and you go in anyway? I know of a person right now got six kids, mm -hmm. left the mother. He is now with another woman, and she's four months pregnant by him. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is, I, I, I'm single. What? Well, <laughs> well <laughs> there's a lot to that. First of all, sometimes individuals live a lifestyle according to the enemy in their flesh, and they do a lot of sexual things with people and don't protect themselves, and they just make babies. That could have been in their sinful state. It's not to say that they don't get saved and turn their life around. Because after getting saved and turned their life around, they still got those kids that they made when they was making some foolish decisions. Right. 
Like I tell people, if I would have had all the children that, that, that I got pregnant with, I would have six children. Okay. But you know I only got two. Right. So so the reality, I did stupid stuff back in the day. I like having sex, but I wasn't protecting myself. And what comes along with that is that you end up getting pregnant. Well, you got some individuals that they may have different women that they go through and they get them all pregnant and all these women decide that they're going to have their babies or they can have them by one woman. But at the end of the day, if that person turns their life around, it doesn't change the choices that they made. Mother folks always say choices, long-lasting and life-changing. So what makes a, here's my question. If you know this man has all these children, been in jail, ain't doing right, but, and you know that, why get involved with him? What, what is it? I mean, I, if he's what, not doing right, I understand you should. Where you're coming, I understand where you're coming from. Believe me, I do. What I've seen on Judge Judy, I've seen on Joe Brown, I've seen it in, out there on the streets, and I ask him, what is it about this man that has no job, living in a basement, or a van, and you still get with him? Yes. Yes. And I'm like, that's, that's good. He said, what is it about the woman? Because there's something going on with the woman that allows her to get involved with a man like that. It's a two-way street. Something is wrong. When I'm talking about this desperation dating, desperation dating will cause you to make some foolish decisions. It will cause you to compromise. You will do things out of desperation. So you will become blind to evident truths that say, back up, leave it alone. But, again, that's if a person has done that in their life, that type of man, went to jail, did all that other stuff. And let's just say the Lord got a hold of him, and he turned his life around. Guess what? Before you get into it and make a serious commitment, you should see some evidence of a changed life. You don't want somebody to look at you just because you have a child and say, I don't want you. Now, can I tell you, that's a choice. When you're dating... You can make a decision to say, I don't want to date a man or a woman that already has children. And there's nothing wrong with that. It does not make you a bad person. I think about me and my husband. I knew what I was getting into with my husband. He wasn't somebody that did jail time and none of that other stuff. But guess what? My husband had four kids. And my mama, we had this conversation. We had a good conversation not long ago. My mama loved me. And she liked James, Pastor Mitchell. But she said, hey, I upstairs in a room, look, now I hear you. Don't you realize he got four babies? Don't you realize that's child support for four children? But I love him. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you something. And I knew what took place in his life prior to that. Amen? And it was one of those things, again, I could never go into it blindly. And even and her biggest challenge was not that he had four kids. Her biggest thing, you know my mother's about finances. My mother ain't want me struggling. You know, you can do bad by yourself all day struggling. You, you, are you ready for that? One thing about it, I could see beyond then and there, and I also know what the Lord spoke to me, but I can see beyond in and there, and I knew that we was going to be in this to win it together. And yeah, it will be rough for a minute, but guess what? Eventually, that will go away. They all grown now. And we went through some things, and we worked it out together. We was in agreement with some things in this marriage, knowing that up front. So it wasn't like I was blind, but it wasn't like he was still in the motor just making babies all over the place. You know, he was married before, amen? He was one that had two with his former wife, and he had one when he was first in a young boy straight out of high school, and, and then, you know, after the marriage, you know, his, his first marriage. But the thing is, when I met him, you know, I wasn't unaware of these things, but you got to be able to see some fruit in a person's life to make a wise decision. But it's still a matter of choice. My, Microphone. My, my, my so life. those that are tuning in can hear you. I guess. Ron, Ron, what you do the eyes for? Type your comment up there. I need to see what your eyes is about. I guess the eyes are rolling. <laughs> uh, but I'm talking about a man that has children by different women. 
you know, that, you know. I, he got three million dollars. I understand. <laughs> I understand that. Okay? Uh -huh. But I'm just talking about today, I'm right now, because <laughs> I've seen it, and I'm yeah. like, okay, because I've seen some of these men, you know, that have that, that situation where they got two by one, three by another, and, and so on and so on. And I'm like, what is it? You know. But it's no different than a woman that may have three baby daddies. Right. Well, that's when I don't. <laughs> but, but again, that's when it comes down to a preference. Again, right. when it comes down to dating individuals and getting to know them, uh -huh. you have to be led of the Lord. God will show you because just because a person has made mistakes in their past does not mean that they're a good person. You just have to know, can, am I, can I handle this? That's one of the chapters in my book on, on, on So You Think You Want to Get Married. It's that whole blended family concept. Because you need to understand that before making a commitment because that is another dynamic all by itself. But again, it's a choice. When you are dating, you are the one that can say, I want to deal with this or I don't want to deal with this. But don't allow desperation dating to allow you to see uh, uh, over the warning signs. I mean, he's been out of jail for one month. <laughs> No, that ain't long enough to be true. You know what I'm saying? You look him up on Maryland Case Search and you see he didn't he didn't he didn't got a history of this. All right. <laughs> Y'all know Maryland Case Search. I tell everybody, look people up. Can, can I tell you when you're dating? Take advice from me. Now, now everybody that does stuff, everything isn't seen. Because some stuff we do, we get away with it. But sometimes if we got a history of stuff, getting locked up for possession of drugs or Credit and all type of stuff. If people had liens on top of liens, and you know, you can find out that people been married and divorced on there. Yeah. You know, when, when you date somebody, you know that it's married. Oh, trust me, boo. Let me see the papers. When it came down to Pastor Mitchell, no, I need to see your divorce papers. Because when you think about it, the young lady that was recently murdered here, she she went over to Africa and married some dude, but she had a husband here. And the one that was here is the one that put a hit out on her because she go and get this little actor from Africa and, and try to live her life because her husband is locked up in jail. And the reality of it is, come on now, you need to see some stuff. I don't care what somebody tell you. I need to see it. And so I, I, I got his divorce papers in a file. Everybody know me, I got files for everything. But you can't go by people's words. And sometimes it's amazing. Mm. <sighs> People don't listen. Daughters, haven't I told y'all look up everybody? I tell them in a heartbeat, you better look them up. Can I, can I be honest? Even my mother, you ain't too old to learn. I'll never forget some guy she met. I said, oh, he's a drunk. I said, he's a drunk. He always getting caught for driving under the influence. Look, put his name in. <laughs> Some people got a history of, uh, of abuse. It's, uh, it's out there. If, they all, if the cops are always being called, it's out there. But you know what? Sometimes we don't want to look. Why we don't want to look, y'all? Because we don't want to know the truth. Because he's fine. <laughs> anyway, let me move on. And so, bottom line is desperation dating will take place if one becomes consumed with their age, especially if they desire children and their biological clock is ticking. Right. See, you got some individuals who, who are, are getting up in age. They may not have any children, and so now they're looking at their clock. So now it will cause them to flow in desperation dating, which is not a good thing. You may have some individuals that uh, 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 may not have a desire to have birth eh, or to give birth, amen? Uh, giving birth may have limits when it comes to childbearing age, but how many of y'all know falling, love, falling in love has no age limits? You know, you may not want children. You may be getting up in age, but at the end of the day, you can't look at the fact that I'm 60, I'm 70, I'm, uh, or, or, or I, I, I'm 48. You know, love has no age limits. Haven't y'all seen older people that have fallen in love? Gotten married in their old age, it's not impossible for it to happen. But when you're just looking at the clock, you make some decisions that are not good. Desperation dating. When you think about it, desperation dating will occur if one is walking in rejection. 
If you're a person that's walking in rejection, you'll date anybody. Anybody that show you some attention. We talked about this in the church before. You know, I had a conversation with somebody and I said to them, why is it that you hooked up with all the people and, and you ain't like none of it? Because they, they, they approached me. They showed me attention. That's because rejection was on the throne. Desperation dating will make you think that you don't have any say. Because somebody showed me some attention. I better jump on this because I never know when somebody else is going to show me some attention. Desperation dating will occur if one is walking in rejection. How many of y'all know that's why it's so important that while you're single, that you work on yourself? You need to take an opportunity to work on yourself as a single man or woman so that you can deal with those issues that you really got going on so that you don't take that stuff into a marriage. You want to go into a marriage being able to enjoy a marriage. Uh, desperation dating will occur when one suffers from low self-esteem. You don't feel good about yourself. You have self-esteem issues. So because of that, it will allow you to deal with and put up with any and everything. Because you don't feel good about you. And again, because somebody show you some attention, you gravitate to it. Desperation dating occurs when one has fear of being alone. Fear of being alone. Do you realize that there are some people that have never been single, meaning not dating a man or woman at all, not involved in any shape, form, or fashion since they first started dating. If they got their first boyfriend at 15, they had a boyfriend for the rest of their life. Get out of one, get right back into another. There are some individuals, because they have never been in a relationship, sometimes you got to look at yourself. You got to ask yourself, have you ever went a whole year without being in a relationship? Have you ever spent some time with getting to know yourself? Or ever since you started hooking up with little boys and hooking up with little girls, you always had interaction. And in the midst of it, with every bad relationship that you got involved with, it did some stuff to you, but you never took time to deal with you and to heal, to get to know you, to look at yourself and say, why did I make some of the crazy choices that I made? But when you have been with somebody all the time, involved in one way, shape, form, or fashion, you are afraid of being alone. And so you will find yourself dating, not because you really desire to really be with somebody. That's all you know. That's all you know. Desperation dating will cause one to ignore the obvious Warning signs. Like, like, like Brother Vernon, uh, D.I.T. Vernon was talking about. Sometimes there's certain things that are so evident for you to see. But it will cause you to ignore the obvious warning signs. And everybody ain't on social media. So I'm going to share with you this poem that I wrote. And it's called He Fine. <laughs> it's a conversation between two friends. And one of them is ghetto fabulous. And... The other one is going, to, you're going to see how it goes. This is how I visualized it when I wrote it. And so, again, desperation dating will cause you to ignore obvious warning signs. Girl, let me tell you about a dude I met. He was chilling on the block in his neighborhood set. We talked and laughed and did an exchange of numbers. And did I mention that he was built like a man known for cutting down lumber? It's been about three months. We talk or text just about every day. Go ahead, I'm listening, because I know you got something to say. You got that right. Huh, let me see. Did you ask him about his relationship with the Almighty? I don't know why your head down in the back and lift it up. I just want your head up. I'm going to take it back to the top. Sometimes things distract me, amen? So sometimes I got to know what's going on. But keep your head up. Let me take it back. Girl, let me tell you about a dude I met. He was <laughs> How many of y'all know? <laughs> this is live, right? Just like the show where they did, redid uh, the Jeffersons and Jamie Foxx messed up. Uh, rewind. That's what I just did, amen? Girl, let me tell you about a dude I met. He was chilling on the block in his neighborhood set. 
we talked and laughed and did an exchange of numbers. And then I mentioned that he was built like a man known for cutting down lumber. It's been about three months. We talk or text just about every day. Go ahead, I'm listening, because I know you got something to say. You got that right. Hmm, let me see. Did you ask him about his relationship with the Almighty? Yeah, he don't do the God church thing, but he fine, you know. I'm not trying to let this one go. So what does this one like to do for fun? Sip a few drinks, party, you know, roll up one. I thought you desired a man who didn't engage. Those type of things used to cause you outrage. I know, I don't like it, but he's fine, you know. I'm not trying to let this one go. What does he do to earn his pay? Does he have the nine to five or does he chill all day? He said he is in between jobs, so he sells a little dope. Despite that setback, don't forget he fine, you know. So is he everything you desire in a man? Do you really think this dude is part of God's plan? Not really, but I think God understands. It's rough out here. It's hard to find a good godly man. Enough with the questions. You always try to block my flow. And haven't you heard anything? I said he fine, you know. Yeah, Tracy, he's so fine. He's so fine. You done lost your mind. Because you're my friend, I'm going to tell you the truth. You need to stop sipping on that desperation juice. I want a man just like you, but any old joker just won't do. See, I'm not willing to invest in something that I know won't last. I made plenty of mistakes and wasted much time in my past, ignoring the warning signs that were easy to see, all because I wanted somebody to love me. Time is precious, and once lost, you can't get it back. Tracy, don't allow another man to get you off track. Can't you see? Same stuff, different day and face. Just another man you won't be able to trace. Like you, sometimes I get lonely too. And would love to hear a man call me his boo. But in those moments, there is something that I do. I cry out to the Lord and he gets me through. My friend, I need you and you need me. And on this journey of dating, we need true accountability. So I am not trying to block your flow, just trying to protect you from a, another unnecessary blow. You right, you right, I was tripping. Truth be told, I felt myself slipping. I love you and thank you for keeping it real, even though I didn't like how what you were saying made me feel. It is what it is, and I know I need to let him go. But girl, did I tell you, he was fine, you know? <laughs> so the bottom line is, there was a whole bunch of water signs in that particular setup, amen? But desperation dating will cause you to ignore the obvious warning signs. When you think about dating, I think about a, stop, a, a signal light, right? And when you think about it, it has three different colors. So when you're dating, think about these three different colors. Red means what? Stop. 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 In the name, not of love, <laughs> but in the name of wisdom, in the name of making right decisions, stop and go no further. Because there are things that the Lord will show you when you are dating a man or a woman, and it will tell you, stop, don't go no further. But then as you're dating and you're getting to know person, a person, sometimes a yellow sign may come up. And the yellow light means what? Caution. 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 Slow down and proceed with caution. Because in the midst of it, he's saying, this thing right here, you need to watch this. Because this has the possibility to cause things to go in a whole other direction. So don't overlook this. I'm not saying this is a reason to cut it off. But I'm saying right now, you need to look at this. The yellow light. Caution. And then you got the what? Green light. Green light is all good. Keep on moving. Keep getting to know each other. See where things end up. But we need to take heed to that. And so, as a believer, a major component that you don't want to downplay or treat as optional in the dating process is the spiritual piece. 
is the spiritual peace. Turn your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 14. And we're going to look at 14 through 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting through verse 14. Let me see. Oh, I asked Rara. She was saying just the way I said it. Okay. All right. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, starting at verse 14. Again, don't downplay the spiritual peace, people, when you are dating. Verse 14, the word of the Lord says, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Talking about the enemy. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. And God has said, I dwell in them and walk among them. I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. When you think about it, you have to ask yourself when you're dating, is he or she a Christian? Have they entered into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I deal with so many people as far as relationships, and you will be amazed that people will communicate with individuals and don't know nothing about the person's spiritual life. And the sad part is it's almost as if Christian women, let me say this, are afraid to bring the subject up because they think it's going to cause a man to run. And, 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 and she said it does what? She said it will cause them to run. You know, and, and so sometimes, guess what? We ain't even going to say that part. We're not going to let our light shine. So we ain't going to bring up the spiritual thing. So you find yourself engaging in all type of conversations, spending time, and you don't even know where this person is spiritually. And then how many of y'all know sometimes we can find out where they are spiritually, and guess what? We know they ain't saved, but guess what? We still want with the green light. How many of y'all know that, that is a problem? That's a major problem. And you got to understand, your mission ain't to save them. Nope. That should not be your mission. I'll get into that. It's a wonderful thing, but don't think that I'm going to be the one that God used him to bring to Jesus. And he let you know straight up where he's staying spiritually from the jump street. Six months into the relationship, he still ain't thinking about God. A year later, he still ain't thinking about God, but you still believe it. Faith is the substance of things hopeful and the evidence of things not seen. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm believing you for it, Jesus. And then when it ends, it's like it was obvious. It was a stop sign. It was a major warning that was overlooked. So you got to ask yourself. And when you think about it, many individuals don't take this serious to spiritual peace and they move forward. But this will be the source of great frustration, especially if you marry somebody knowing that they are unbeliever. See, a lot of times a woman, and I'm talking about women because most of our individuals in here that are millennials that are single are women. We got one unmarried man in the house. But the, at the end of the day, most of them are women. And women have the greatest tendency to overlook what's evident, especially when it comes down to a person's spiritual life. I'm going to share with you some of the compromising statements that individuals make from a book by Miles Monroe called Waiting and Dating. And these are things that he's come in contact with over the years of dealing with people. He's not a Christian, but he sure is a nice guy. These are some things that ladies have said. He's not a Christian. No, he's not. He ain't a believer, but he sure is a nice guy. Even nice guys won't make it to heaven without Jesus. And an unbeliever cannot be of the same spirit with a believer because they are not even on the same road together. Another statement, he is, he, he is a better gentleman than most Christians I've dated. Polite and respectful behavior is important, but over the long term, will not compensate for the absence of spiritual oneness. He's not a Christian because he doesn't want to be a hypocrite. You know that one. I want to get myself together first before I come to the Lord because I ain't trying to play. Mm. And sometimes my sisters are so dumb. And that's the only way I can say it. Sometimes my sisters are so dumb that we just believe that stuff. When, come on now, why would 
would you listen to this foolishness coming from the list? I know why. Because he signed up. <laughs> he is not a Christian because he doesn't want to be a hypocrite. Would he stop going to his bank just because one of the tellers turned out to be a crook? There is merely an excuse to avoid being around believers where he might hear the gospel and get saved. Next statement. He wants our children to go to my church. That's why I like him. Children in a home where one parent is a believer and one is not often grow up spiritually confused. Why do I have to go to church? Daddy doesn't go. This is a recipe for trouble. Next one. We have so much in common other than religion. Oh, yes, we have such a wonderful conversation. We got, we enjoy this, we enjoy this. Not the God peace, that's lacking. But we have so much in common other than religion. At the most basic and fundamental level, the spiritual level, a believer and an unbeliever have nothing in common. The superficial commonalities are inadequate to sustain a relationship with no common spiritual center. I think he's open. I think he's open. Maybe I can witness to him on our dates. Here's the sober point blank truth I share with those who rationalize this way. If he won't change to get you, he sure won't change to keep you. Once you've lowered, lowered your standards to win him, what grounds do you have to try to raise them again afterwards? And then here's one. I told him that in order for us to work, I told him he had to be a Christian. So he accepted Christ. If he was sincere, fine. But this raises a question of motivation. Did he accept Christ because he knew he needed to be saved or because he wanted you? What was his real reason and motive? Did you tell him he had to be a Christian because you were concerned about his spiritual condition or because you were recruiting a spouse? It's major. Because guess what? His motive will become evident. If it was never about his spiritual life, it will become evident in his actions. But sometimes people will do certain things to do what? Get you. But if we have enough sense before getting involved as far as what to look for and what to not put up with, we will make better decisions. And so hear me clearly. You don't want just a saved individual that's a church goer. Sometimes we're just happy with that. Because you can be with a believer and still be unequally yoked. You can still be unequally yoked. When I talked to the Lord about what I desired in a man, I didn't talk about looks. I didn't talk about job. I didn't talk about any of that. I said, God, I want a man that loves you. I didn't want a man. I, I, told him, I don't want a man that's just saved. I don't want a man that just go to church. That don't mean nothing just because you show up on Sunday. I didn't want that. I said, God, I want a man that loves you. Because I knew that if I got a man that loved God, he would know how to love me. But a lot of times, we just happy because they go to church. Or we happy because they said, thank you, Jesus. It's more to it than that. And let's just be for real. To all my women in here, they got men. Husbands and things of that nature. Single and dating and have a man. Married and have a man. You know, boyfriend and, and, and in a relationship. The reality is, People really want to worship with the one that they love. You go on with life. You know your relationship with the Lord is your relationship. But at the end of the day, a woman wants to worship with her husband. And a husband should want to worship with his wife. A woman who may be dating is one thing if your man has a church that he's faithful to and committed to. It's another thing if you date a joker that don't have a church and he don't go nowhere and he don't even come with you. Because at the end of the day, as much as you want to make like it's okay, it bothers you. It bothers you. Don't
Don't let it stop you from worshiping. But for real, we want that because that's the way it should be. Because even if we go back to the beginning and how things were set up, even when you look at it, the men were the ones that was responsible for the spiritual oversight of their family. But if you get with a joker who ain't got no spiritual depth himself, how he going to lead you? So there are some things that we need to know beforehand. It's one thing if you get saved, if you get married to somebody while you're unsaved. You're unsaved, he's unsaved. But it's something different when you are saved and you go into it knowing straight up where this person lacks spiritually. I'm telling you, it's going to grieve you. It's going to be a source of frustration in your relationship. Trust me when I tell you this. And so, you don't want just a saved individual that is a church going. You want a spiritual person who has a relationship with the Lord and not just religious. And guess what? Sometimes that don't make a difference to you because you ain't there. Can I just say that? Sometimes his spiritual life or her spiritual life don't make a difference to you because for real, you ain't even there yourself. You a church goer. And so you don't really have any real standards, so we got to do things different. And so you cannot avoid spirituality and dating. Are your beliefs even compatible beyond believing in Jesus Christ as the Son of God? Because you got some individuals that are in a different mindset. They may believe in the Son of God. But I, I, I know I know a couple, I know a marriage right now that is that is that is that is torn apart. Because this individual has a problem with with, with her stance as a woman of God in the kingdom of God. Because in his mind, a woman is supposed to be silent. There are certain things that you really have to get, you know, you know, you ain't supposed to be leading the church. But you married her leading the church. But there were some real conversations that should have been had. So guess what? Y'all can both be believers, but how do they believe? What do they believe? Does it line up with your beliefs? Because guess what? If it doesn't, it's going to be a source of contention. So people of God, don't take it lightly. And so, as I stated earlier, online dating is the most popular way that people date. So next week, I'm going to go more in detail about the pros and cons of it. Amen. And so what I discussed in the online day, it can be applied to relationships where you meet people face-to-face -face or through somebody else. Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Anybody got any questions or comments? Phones open before I close. All right. Amen. Thank you all for taking this opportunity to tune into our Sunday morning worship service. We will be back here next week, same time, same bad channel, and we will continue this teaching. I pray that you have been blessed. If you want to know more about our ministry, go to www.nbttministries.com. If you want to be a blessing and so into this ministry, there are many different ways that you can do that. Uh, of course, technology through Cash App. Dollar sign N B T T M is a way that you can sow a seed into this ministry, or you can go to our website. And on our website, we have a link for sowing, and it is a secured site, so you can go through there and sow a seed as well. I pray that you have been blessed. Enjoy your Memorial Day weekend.